Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This is part 329. We're continuing with our title, Life Under the Gods, which will be part 2. We've been saying that the times ahead are going to institute radical change. A change in which the human race is not prepared, nor will they be able to endure the conditions that are going to be brought of, brought out of this new uh, reality. <clears throat> we are trying to dissect some of the things that the scripture tells us that describe the radical changes that are going to be experienced. Scripture teaches, from the beginning of sorrows, the human race will find itself thrust into a reality in which it cannot comprehend. <clears throat> the heavens above will reveal to the unenlightened things of terror, but to the wise things of understanding. So there are going to be tremendous <clears throat> revelations, disclosures, conditions, that those that aren't prepared for them are going to react in a state of terror, but those that have wisdom and understanding will comprehend. Turn to Luke, the 21st chapter, verse 11. Oh, Luke 21, verse 11. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Sure. I appreciate it. No problem. I'll memorize it. This takes place, we call the beginning of sorrows. It'll be the transition point in which this current reality will go out of basic existence and it will be overshadowed, dominated by a new reality in which phenomena are going to appear in which <clears throat> the comprehension will not be received by the human race. It speaks of great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Fearful sights and great signs. Fearful sights to the people that don't comprehend it. <clears throat> great signs. In other words, signs comes from a Greek term, simeon, which means miraculous wonders mm. will be revealed to those who have spiritual comprehension. Let me ask, at the point that Elohim is bringing about the judgment, the shaking, the earthquake, so on and so forth, is YHVH joining in this, or does he stand apart? No, he's there. Okay. He has his place in it. That's Jehovah. Yes. Yes. Yahweh. I have a question, uh, sure. if that's okay. Sure. Uh, um, pestilence is, I, I have a good dictionary, I didn't bring it with me, but I don't know what that means. What is that? Pestilence is... Pestilence, disease outbreaks. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The Spanish flu, whatever it is. Right. Uh, <coughs> what you're having now with the COVID and uh, yeah. tremendous um, flu outbreaks, mm -hmm. which are all engineered in a laboratory, they're yes. not naturally mm -hmm. caused, <coughs> they're yeah. man-made, but you, you're going to have a tremendous mm -hmm. global pandemic of rampant diseases attacking people, mm -hmm. along with wars geological upheavals the, the, mm. the, the, the very contour of the earth is going to change mm. turn to Daniel's 12th chapter verses 9 to 10 
You're gonna let me struggle today, aren't you? <laughs> Daniel, 12th chapter, verses 9 to 10. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So an angel gives Daniel a rundown of events that are going to be revealed at a specific time. But for Daniel, there are mysteries that he can't comprehend because they're not for his time. And Daniel, being curious, desires to have an explanation for what is the significance of all these things. The angel tells him, uh, go on with your life, Daniel. It's not going to happen in your time. <clears throat> Therefore, the comprehension, the understanding is not for you. There's going to come a time when they will be understood and they will be conditions that are going to be brought forth and experienced by the people of that time. The results, verse 10, many shall be purified and made white and tried by the revelations that are going to be brought forth. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. Now, the wise, those that seek wisdom, the highest calling that a person can pursue in this life. Why? Because it's only the wise that are going to prevail through this change, this reality that's going to dominate life on earth. Only those that have comprehension, and comprehension comes from the Holy Spirit, will be able to deal with the events that are going to take place on the earth to reach the plateau of wisdom necessitates sacrifice you have to pursue it in this life you have to be willing to give up something to receive comprehension of the things that are coming on this world okay. but the one that does it will find themselves at the pinnacle of authority, <coughs> the pinnacle of glory when the dust settles. In Daniel, the 12th chapter, let's take a look at verses 1 to 3. Just before you go to verses 1 to 3, yes. can you clarify that the purified are the elders and the wise are the teachers? Purified, uh, excuse me? The purified, those who will be purified mm -hmm. are the elders and the wise are the teachers, just for those who may not know. Oh, uh, because of the revelation knowledge that's going to be revealed, the teachers are going to be the only ones that really have the comprehension. Those that sit under the teaching are the elders, mm -hmm. which will be the ones that will, through the experience that's been given to them endure and overcome the conditions of this radical change. Mm -hmm. Now the teachers will go on to be the movers and shakers of the <clears throat> the new reality to come. We're going to take a look at Daniel 12 chapter 1 to 3. Now this takes place at the end of the age, the time of the Lord returns to set up his kingdom. <clears throat> this is giving you a description of the finality of all things. In other words, the beginning of the millennial period. Mm. Daniel 12, verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. 
There shall be a time of trouble such as was never since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that should be found written in the book. Of course, this is referring to what's called the Great Tribulation, which has to be intervened by the Lord himself, by God himself. <clears throat> Verse 2, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is referring to the resurrection. This is what we want. Verse 3, And they that be wise, they that be wise, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. <clears throat> and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So it's talking about the glory of the preeminent prototokos, the wise, those who have availed themselves, prepared themselves to understand through the revelation of the scripture what is about to take place. When these things take place, the Holy Spirit will have imparted understanding of the events that are taking place. They will be pillars of stability in a sea of chaos. As they acquire wisdom, because revelation is progressive, they will be used in a greater and greater and greater way as the stabilizing influence that will draw others to them who will perceive, who will desire to receive this priceless revelation knowledge. At the end, they will have a glory that's described here that rivals the galaxies, <clears throat> the great island universes that science look at through the telescopes, Andromeda, Cassiopeia, Sestis Omicron 3, all these gigantic island universes that have a stupendous glory, Crab Nebula, Spiral Nebula, the blinding lights, one individual's glory will rival that. Why? Because of his wisdom. Others <coughs> who have been given the ministry of soul winning also have a glory but not as great of a glory as the wise they will, their glory will be like the stars but in comparison the glory of the wise will be unrivaled throughout the creation this is what we have the opportunity to enter into now Praise the Lord. and everybody that makes the right choice is wise put it that way <laughs> absolutely Absolutely. Let's go on. Scripture teaches the heavens are vast regions in which are stored mysterious phenomena which will be transported into the reality of Adamic man at the beginning of sorrows. The heavens uh, <coughs> are vast levels of <clears throat> habitations that are currently invisible to the human race but they are things that are kept in store for man to experience at the time of this radical change. Okay. These heavens are going to be revealed to the human race at the beginning of sorrows. We see that the scripture gives us an understanding of what they're like. Turn to Job, 38th chapter, verse 22 to 23. Job 38, verse 22 to 23. This is 
God himself, Elohim, speaking about his creation to Job. He's telling him about things that man cannot detect because he's trying to give Job an understanding of how infinite, infinitely diminutive <laughs> Job is in comparison to what's really existing and Job's righteousness as nothing that's impressing God for Job to even mention let alone exalt himself about. I'm surprised he hasn't said be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well he does. You know. Says, this is darkness counsel without wisdom. You guys don't know what you're talking about. In other words. Anyway 22. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail? Now the word treasures there <coughs> comes from a Hebrew term, osa, which can mean treasures, but it means storehouses. So he's talking about <coughs> the reality of the heavens and one characteristic of them is that they are storehouses. Hast thou entered into the storehouses of the snow, or hast thou seen the storehouses of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? What is he saying? He's saying that these storehouses are reserved for a time in which the things that are contained within them are going to be rained down on the earth. The human race is going to find itself exposed to phenomena that it can't deal with, raining out of the heavens. Turn to Isaiah 24, verse 18. Isaiah 24, verse 18. I said the only problem that the Bible, that you have with the Bible, is that it's never been presented. Hmm. It was never meant to be the exclusive purview of an elitist group that's supposed to teach everybody else. It was meant to be pursued by God's people individually. But because that has not happened, it's not transpired, the human race remains ignorant of true reality. Isaiah 24, verse 18. <clears throat> And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear, which is coming down out of the heavens, shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. This is talking about a time in which this reality is going to be in vogue influencing life on earth and the human race is going to be in a situation in which it's in a state of panic and terror yes who would be coming out of the midst of the pit beings remember the pit's another name for hell okay <clears throat> jesus i have the keys of death and hell mm. and those keys are open mm. things will come up the torment the human race. You have but, judgments. But they, those things you're referring to, will be snared. Yes, and snared refers to the second coming. Okay. In which all evil is going right, to be recaptured okay. and brought into a state of captivity. Excellent, thank you. But prior to that, you, you remember we said this is a generation. Sure. Forty years when people are going to endure this stuff. They're not going to be able to deal with it. I can't imagine. Mm -mm. <clears throat> so you begin to see the heavens are storehouses in which things are going to be released into man's reality. We're going to take a look at this 
uh, <clears throat> in a stage of what are some of the things man's going to have to deal with. The heavens are storehouses for elements, winds, rains, snows, noise, sounds. Scripture teaches mighty winds will be released onto the earth. Isaiah 40, verse 22 to 24. You're going to have tremendous cyclonic winds that sweep across the globe, and anything that's caught in their wake is going to be wiped out. Isaiah 24, I mean, Isaiah 40, verse 22 to 24. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof, thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain. Again, the same principle. The heavens are leveled of regions, vast regions that are stretched out in sequential descending contour over the earth. <coughs> It stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. <clears throat> Continuing. The <clears throat> when he refers to verse 23, that bringeth the princes to nothing, that maketh the judges of the earth his vanity, yea, they shall not be planted, yea, they shall not be sown, yea, they stop, shall not take root in the earth, he shall also blow upon them, they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. Tremendous cyclonic winds are going to sweep across the earth, uprooting whatever is in their path and sweep it into oblivion. Do you imagine that this continues? Like a hurricane, huh? Yes. 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 Storm. Mm -hmm. Massive storm. <clears throat> yes. Do you imagine that this continues for uh, an extended period of time? Yes. It's a judgment. From when to when? Uh, <clears throat> it's going to be incremental in different places at different times. But from the beginning of sorrows. Yes, right. from the beginning of sorrows. Until the second coming, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Is that 40 years? Yeah. Well, yeah, all this is going, to is going to last for a period of about 40 years, a generation. Wow. Turn to Isaiah 17, verse 13. These are all judgments that are going to come out of the heavens. Isaiah 17, verse 13. And the nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters. The word rush there means roar. Like the roaring of many waters, but God shall rebuke them. And they shall flee <laughs> far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind. And like, the rolling, and like a rolling thing, before the whirlwind. Winds are going to sweep against those that have stood in opposition to God and literally sweep them away into oblivion. Now, sons of God are going to use wind uh, as a tool. And we see that the Father himself and the Son uses wind. Turn back to Job 38. I wish we had more time, but our time is severely limited here. Thank you, Brother Richard, for taking the time. Mm -hmm. No problem. Appreciate it. Okay. This is what I do. This is what I do. Very well. Job 38, one. Oh, we lost somebody? Oh, no, uh, someone's trying to call. That's okay. Oh, okay. Just 
Mr. Tzidia. Yeah. Um, Job 38.1 Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? So the sons of God, the prototokists, the wise, are going to be able to use the elements as instruments of their ministry. you be using this before the time of the ascension to your inheritance. Because when this thing goes south, and the reality, new reality sets in, you will find abilities uh, being coming forth from you to dialogue, to contact the elements, because they're your part of your inheritance as the Son of God. Mm-hmm. And you can manifest things mm-hmm. to enable you to go forth in your capacity as teacher and instructor. So I understood you to mean that between the end of the gathering when the rewards are given by the Lord to the rapture and glorification is the period that you're referring to. Before that. Beginning Before. of sorrows. Mm. Okay. As you progress. From the moment of the beginning of sorrows. Yeah. Interesting. You're entering okay. into a new reality. So that's before the elevation, in other words. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm talking about the gathering elevation. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. That's interesting. Yes. The, for the protokis, <clears throat> the nonsense here, the Seleucian pseudo-reality is going to be broken. And the sons of God are going to enter into a period of <clears throat> deliverance in which their calling begins to consummate through them. So then I take that to be the, the period that Jesus says, and you will do greater things than I, exactly. and we operate in the fullness exactly. of his fullness. Now, this is on the way to the gathering. Hmm. You hmm. see yourself entering into, he says... <clears throat> <clears throat> the faithful and wise servant is going to step into his calling, yes. which he has been prepared for yes. from eternity. So, yeah, okay. all this is when you begin to gel. And you, even now, you can begin, if you are open to it, to feel things changing within you. Mm. Mm-hmm. You can't explain it. You can't comprehend it. It's because your spirit is coalescing, being prepared mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the time the X, Y axis crosses. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is that the spiritual awakening that you feel? Yes. Mm. That I felt many yeah. times. Well, you might, yeah. Depending upon how advanced you are and how open you are to the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. if the Holy Spirit is indwelling you, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. You could say that this, the spiritual awakening that you're referring to is the beginning of what is referring to. Oh, okay, okay. You could, you it could it's describe it. It's separate. It, no, it's not separate. Personal. It's the beginning of. Oh, okay. Up in Job, the second chapter, verse 30, 28 to 31. Uh, Joel, not Joe. Joel. 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 Oh, Joel. 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 Slight difference. Oh, yeah. Difference. You know what? Like, a lot of people call him um, Joel. And I met a yeah. Joel. Yeah. 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 Yes, it's <laughs> spelled the Joel. same as I understand it. Mm-hmm. One of my best friends was named Joel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> After Daniel. After Daniel. Mm-hmm. Joel, we want the second chapter, verse 28 to 31. Mm -hmm. This is the backdrop of phenomena that's taking place. Mm -hmm. This is consistently happening. Mm Verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke 
the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So come to pass that whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This is not the second coming. At the second coming, nobody is going to prophesy. This is the gathering. You say, how do you know? Turn to Zechariah. 13, okay. verse 3. Zechariah 13, verse 3. You're probably going to get comments and say, you're mixing mm -hmm. uh, Israel with... The, the, no, no, no. This is all non-Israel. I haven't met anyone that advanced yet. So. Yeah, so well, I'm probably not going to get this You comments. will. Yeah. You will. Because people believe, they think they've got a handle on this. So this is Luke 21, 25. Yes. Well. Okay. Turn to Zechariah 13. Okay, when you get chapter 13, we want verse 3. Thank you. This is the second coming. I'm going to read verses 1 to 3. You'll focus on verse 3. In that day, there shall be a fountain open in the house of David, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanliness. It shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered, and also I will cause the prophets, the unclean spirit, to pass out of the land. It shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy the same word that we just read in Joel, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. This says, if anybody prophesies, then his father and his mother that begot him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that begot him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth. There will be no prophesying at the second coming. Because why? A prophet is a spokesman for God. God himself is going to be there. He'll need no spokesman. His word is going to go forth out of his own mouth. Prior to this, Yes, the Holy Spirit is going to pour out and raise up prophets and apostles because the church is going to be reinvigorated commensurate with the gathering. So you have Joel <coughs> speaking about the gathering. Zechariah speaking about the second coming. coming. Okay. 